Do you remember this place? I do. <laughs> Very well. How much more comfortable does this feel, you know, now that you get into the training camp compared to, to a year ago? Um, so, I, you know, personally, I'm in a different space. Uh, feel really well, feel really good, comfortable being around the guys, the locker room, the coaching staff, the organization, and just the city of Cleveland. So, uh, you know, having an opportunity to go into the season, full off season, locked in, focus, uh, definitely feels good. And I want to continue to, you know, keep channeling and cherishing all that energy and positive energy that has been, you know, spread around this organization and the city for when myself. You, when you say you're in a different space, do you find it easier to focus on football this year because it's so different? Of course, yeah. I mean, I can just lock in on my craft. I can lock in on my job, my profession. Uh, you know, when I leave the football field, I can focus on studying the game and uh, not having any distractions. So that's what I'm just doing is just taking it one day at a time, uh, one opportunity at a time, and just really just cherishing that, this moment uh, as best as I can. Deshaun, when people talk about you in the locker room, you know, they view you as a really strong natural leader. Do you feel this year, like you took the guys to Miami, you went to Puerto Rico, do you feel like this year you've really had the ability to take the reins of, of this locker room? Um, yeah, I think, and then it goes back again. You know, last year was, it was just a different, um, different space for myself, but different for the whole team and the organization. You know, there were some things that we had to deal with and take care of, and we had to do that. So it was hard for the team to really attach to me and, and fully because they had to get ready for another, you know, another quarterback in Jacoby. But like I said, the past is the past, but we can focus on this year and everyone was able to really, you know, figure out who I was and, you know, get to know me a little bit better. And, um, you know, my personality has been able to show around the locker room as best as I can. Deshaun, how is uh, Kevin helping you? And then how would you characterize how your partnership and relationship has evolved over the last 18 months? Uh, me and Kevin has just been, our relationship is going to continue to grow. And um, as the days go by, we continue to talk and communicate. Uh, he know he can come to me with whatever situation, if it's about football, if it's about life, if it's about the locker room, anything. He can come to me and, and I make sure I take care of it. And uh, vice versa, I can do the same with him. So, uh, you know, we've been able to talk over the past off season. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll talk about football, sometimes we'll talk about family, vacation, all types of things. So being able to have that relationship and that open role for both of us to communicate is definitely uh, a bonus for us. When you said that um, in minicamp that everything's new as it relates to the offense, can you elaborate on that a little bit and sort of give us an idea of how everything's new? I'm trying to get you to spill the beans. <laughs> uh, i just say that, you know, being able to move everyone around, uh, being able to have you know, guys play all types of different positions and uh, being able to, you know, go out there and, and, and play fast, but have, like I said, the biggest thing is just moving guys around and being able to do all types of things that, you know, this, you know, you guys in the media, or this fan base haven't seen in the, in the past. So uh, being able to open the whole playbook and open the whole offense is definitely going to be special. How much is that is, is Elijah being with this team now and what he can the way you can utilize him all over the formation? Uh, it's, it's great because Elijah can do all types of things. He's very versatile. He can play outside, inside, uh, whatever you need him to do, he can do. But also just the young guys and the depth that we have in that receiver room. Yeah, a lot of guys might not have big names yet, but they can go out there and they can make plays. And being able to you know, hang around Amari, hang around DPJ, hang around Elijah, the young guys are being able to you know, channel that opportunity, that grind, that work and be able to go out here and participate and be locked in and focus. And, um, you know, that's what we've been able to see. And we want to have depth and, um, you know, everyone be able to have the opportunity to make plays. Hey, you said that time away for you was difficult last year. Did the suspension change you as a player or a person? Um, of course. I mean, the whole, the whole situation changed me, um, you know, in a situation where it's just kind of I had to lock in on myself you know, channel and, and, and really know who I'm, you know, surrounding myself with and just really who, who's going to be there and support me, you know, even when I'm at my lowest point. And, uh, you know, the last two years was definitely my lowest point of my life. But, you know, that, that's, that's part of life. And, uh, you know, I just go from it. I learn from it. I continue to move forward and push forward and continue to show my real character, my real personality and who I am. You said you've embraced when the pressure is on you. So how comfortable are you with the thought, I think it's pretty prevalent out there that this team will go as far as you take it this year? Uh, yeah, I think pressure is a, is a, it's a, it's a broad word. Um, I think a lot of people see it differently. 
Uh, with me, it's, it's a situation where, you know, it's, it's where you, moments and situations, opportunities you fear uh, and you don't feel comfortable because you haven't prepared yourself for those moments. So my job as a quarterback, as a leader, is trying to think of all situations and opportunities that we can go through. And it might be certain situations that we probably I haven't thought of or practiced, but, you know, in my mind, I like to kind of daydream and, and put myself in those positions. And if I know I can, then I can be a little bit calm and, um, and, and, and trying to bring down the pressure. But for, to your question, it's more of just kind of like, yeah, it's going to go as far as the quarterback takes us because we touch the ball every play. We're the leader, and we, we direct where the ball goes and if it gets in the end zone. And I think, you know, with this opportunity for myself, I want to be able to embrace that pressure and embrace that opportunity, and uh, let's see what happens. Sean, when you talk about uh, this whole situation changed you, Um, I'm blessed. I'm I'm happy. I'm uh, I'm grateful. I'm thankful for this opportunity. Uh, you know, I talked to the team last night. We we had an opportunity. Kevin called up a couple guys, and you know, we gave our history, our story. Um, he called it the four H's, which is the his, history about yourself, your heroes, your heartbreaks, and your hopes. And I had the opportunity to speak to the team and and told my story. But uh, you know, I'm I'm just happy about just life in general and you know I have a great support cast around me I have a great family I have a great home um, and the organization that's that's backing me up so with that foundation you know I feel like I can you know get back to where I was and, and be even better as a person and as a player how many players did the 4-H yesterday yeah, I think it was like three players and one coach so I think every night we're probably going to have the opportunity to get to know everyone Sean one of the big topics recently has been about your brain No, I cannot. Uh, I mean, Chubb, really all those guys, but starting with Chubb, I mean, he's a big part of this offense, and we know that. And so we're going to continue to feature him and uh, do what he's great at. And uh, Chubb, he, he's going to embrace his role and uh, be able to do everything, catch passes, run the ball, and do things that he probably haven't done before. But, you know, when you get in that meeting room and you ask him if he's comfortable with it, he's, he's open for what, whatever's going to help the team, you know, get to that ultimate goal, that's what he's going to do. So, uh, you know, being able to feature him, he's a very important part for this, not just the offense, but this team. And now when you had a chance to kind of watch those games last year from afar, did you learn anything new about him or see anything about him that kind of surprised I've always known Chubb is going to be Chubb. You know, I've been watching him since high school. You know, we both from Georgia, so high, watching high school football, Cedartown, and games, but I don't think we're in the same division, but uh, our bracket, however you call it, classification, but um, I already knew about Chubb, so um, it's nothing new for me. It wasn't surprising for me. It's just not having an opportunity to play with him is definitely fun. Did you feel more comfortable in this offense? I'm just kind of curious. How has AVP and Kevin challenged you when it comes to you know elevating your game? I think the biggest challenge is being able to go out there and um, kind of direct the offense. You know, of course they give me plays in, in certain situations, but allowing me to be able to put us in the right play. And uh, whenever that situation where we know we're not in the right play and the defense get us, not making that mistake, you know, dirt in the ball, maybe sometimes throwing it away, or sometimes you might have to take a sack just because it's just part of the game and you got to get the defense credit. So being able to take that next step with that and putting us in situations where we can kind of help the defense, help the special teams, but put us in situation, field position to be able to score points is definitely another area that we want to continue to grow. It looks like a, a lot more shotgun this year. In the six games you played last year, did it feel like you were on the center more than ever? Uh, no, not really. In, in Houston, I was on the center a lot. We did a lot of uh, wide zone and play action keepers. No, nah, not really. You know, I think it was a balance of what I've done before. Kevin, when, so when you were. Uh, it was great. I mean, the feedback has been great. A lot of, you know, guys been coming up to me and, and telling me thank you and, you know, appreciate the story and just really just how real it was and uh, how impactful it was for, for them to hear it. You know, a lot of people knew of me. A lot of people heard different things. A lot of people, especially the last years, heard different things. And a lot of people watched me, you know, through college because we have a young team. Um, so they, you know, kind of too, but they didn't know my history history from where I grew up. 
uh, you know, games with Georgia, 815 Harrison Square, the session apartments, you know, that type of situation of, you know, when I was a young kid, I didn't think of the NFL. I didn't know I was going to make it out of high school. You know, my mom being sick and having tongue cancer and not being able to eat solid food ever again. You know, not having a father figure in my life ever, probably 27 years, only seeing him four times, you know, and, you know, different stuff like that is just is things that people don't really get to hear about. You know, especially the last few years been, you know, the media directing and narrating something, something, something else, uh, you know, it's, it's been kind of overshadowed. So having an opportunity to tell that story in front of those guys and lift those teammates in their eyes and be able to touch them and let them know how, you know, why I am who I am, you know, is definitely impactful. Kevin said he found you in the facility before you were supposed to report watching film and he wasn't expecting to see you there. Do you remember that? And but like, why, why were you there watching film when like, it wasn't even report day yet? Um, I mean, that's just, I'm just hungry. I'm just, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm ready to just go out there and just play ball. And, um, you know, I, I've always been a student at a game, but, you know, when, nothing else to do when I'm sitting at home. So all I want to do is just go out there and try to improve. You know, we have so much time and uh, just, you know, free time in the off season. And my mindset was just really just making sure I'm prepared and going out there, like I said before, is pin myself in situations that uh, can come up this season on the field, off the field, and just being able to just go out there and grind. So it was just, when I'm in Cleveland, if I'm not at the house or out eating, I'm at the facility. And those are the three spots that I'm pretty much doing, or I'm located. Hey, Deshaun, as Dan mentioned earlier, the running backs are kind of taking a literal beating around the league now with this economic situation. You're a quarterback, but do you have sympathy for kind of the situation that they're in right now? Of course. I mean, they, they carry this team. They carry the, the offense. If you don't have a running game, it's hard to have a passing game. And it's hard to open up the, for the receivers. It's hard to make the game easy for, you know, the quarterback. So, you know, because a lot of teams can play too high shell and, and do different things and try to take away the passing game. So, yeah, of course, I think guys should get paid. I think all those guys should get paid um, that's, you know, either holding out or waiting for their opportunity. So um, I think they, you know, deserve the money and they deserve everything that a, each person deserves. This year. Uh, I wouldn't even say disappointment. I think it's just more of just making sure he's healthy, making sure he's safe. You know, he's a brother of mine. We signed with the same agent, so I've known uh, Keith for a long time, and I know how good and, uh, you know, I know his heart. I know how hungry he is to just go come out here and play with us. So it's tough for him to kind of watch from the sidelines, but safety comes first and health is first. And um, we, we all here for him. We all been praying for him. We all, you know, going to support him and rock with him. And when his opportunity comes, I know he's going to be ready and, and prepare for that moment. So whatever he's going to do to make sure that he's safe and healthy, it, it comes first, and then football is going to come after that. Deshaun, Deshaun, more? Deshaun, when you talk about where you are personally, how is this the – do you feel like you're in the best spot personally in, in, in your life? I mean, where would you put that? Yeah, I think – I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. I think I'm in the best spot of my life, and I think it's just because, you know, I'm older, I'm more wise, uh, I've experienced different things in different situations. Um, I mean, I think you guys can see it by the way I'm asking the questions. You know, it's just kind of, you know, being able to talk and communicate. You know, last year I was in that situation because I wasn't in the right headspace. But being able to have that right headspace, you know, go through different media, uh, you know, tasks and opportunities, go through, you know, what the NFL put me through with, you know, the therapy sessions and things like that. You know, I didn't take that lightly. You know, I really cherish those moments and I want to learn, you know. So, um, you know, I thank everyone that was a part of that and being able to, you know, like I said before, have that background and that foundation to support me has been great. Have you, some can, have you continued some of that? You know, you mentioned the therapy sessions. Have you tried to kind of continue that, you know, even after, you know, the, the mandate was, you know? Of course, yeah. I just, I, I've never experienced it before because I thought, you know, being a young kid and, you know, things is going, you know, in the right direction at the time, as I th thought, uh, you don't really think, you just kind of go to day-to-day -day life. But even when you're not going through a situation and things are going great, it's always good to be able to talk to someone, be able to experience and, and learn different things. And uh, I feel like I can learn from anybody, no matter what part of life or situation or how high up in your profession you are or how low you are, I feel like everyone has a story and has an opportunity that, you know, you can learn from. So. When I'm talking to someone, I try to just 
if it's a small little nugget I can just grab it from and, and put it in my life and my situation so I can grow and learn, that's what I want to do. And what would you want people just to know about you? You've been pretty introspective today, so. Um, know about me? Um, yeah. I've always been who I am. You know, nothing ever, you know, changed me in a way of just the type of person, the character that I am. You know, I've been able to grow and learn, like I said before, but who I was as a little kid growing up and being able to give back to the city, back to the community, and just love people and, and just give out just peace and just great energy, that's that's me, that's Deshaun Watson. And, um, you know, and I know other people have different opinions, that's fine, that's totally fine, but I can't let that dictate who I am as a person, and I want to continue to just show that, and it's going to eventually show, because I'm a man of, of Christ, and I know my Lord and Savior, so I just focus on that, and it's going to continue to light, it's going to come to light. Deshaun, you mentioned uh, last one here for helping in the community and stuff. You have been doing that largely outside of your camp largely done that under the radar with very little fanfare. Um, just how important has that been for you to be able to do things like that without you know trying to specifically attract attention to yourself? Um, because that's that's what I've always done. Is that's that's just me. So I don't I don't need the media, I don't need people to, you know, necessarily talk about it. I don't do it for the glory or things like that. You know, I do it for the kids. I do it for the community. I do it for people at need so they can have those opportunities and smile and, you know, have, you know, things that they probably wish they never or they probably always dreamed of and couldn't get. So I have the opportunity to kind of give back to them. You know, I don't just do it because I'm in a new city and things like that. I do it because I love it. And that's just me, my heart, that's my family. And that's how, you know, it helped me get to my situation and when I was a little kid, you know, so being able to grow from that and do that. You know, I don't just do it in Cleveland. I do it in Georgia, back in my hometown. I still do it in Houston. I still got love for the city of Houston and the people there. So I still have my home there. So anywhere I can give back and, and be able to inspire people and motivate people, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my calling.